Is every artist a storyteller? Every good artist is a storyteller. Yeah. So then people that are maybe more green, is that what's missing? Is that the picture isn't telling a story? Oh, no. I think um, sometimes green artists are the best artists because it's just like they tell a story. They're so they're not jaded by the industry and they're just telling a story and they saw something beautiful and they think that it should be on print or in video format or something. So they, some of the best things come out with new artists. And I, those are the people I try to compliment the most when I see on the internet because not the ones that are published. They may not even get the message or they may not receive it as much as like someone from like, I don't know, Wyoming. And they're like, are you kidding me? Thank you so much for, yeah, I always, I try to do that a lot. Um, green doesn't mean anything. I think that when it loses its, no, I think green actually contributes because you have the certain level of just being naive that you know makes you do gutsier things um i think what makes a bad picture is when you're trying to copy for the sake of for the wrong intentions for fame for insta fame for endorsements that's i think what makes it and it's it's obvious what do you think is tougher getting started on youtube or instagram um, both are their own devils. I, as a photographer, or, or for how, for whom? Well, that's a good point. I mean, because what you do on YouTube is more sort of like how to for mm -hmm. photographers to make money, not just not just what their ISO and desktop yeah. and all that, but yeah. but how to actually have a career from it. So, building a following on YouTube versus Instagram, this both seem like it's really tough, especially now. They're very tough. Um, so for my personal Instagram, I gave up the number thing because I'd rather have quality versus quantity, you know? So a brand, um, I've lost some jobs because I didn't have a high enough followers. They're like, you only have 8,000. We're the competing photographer. Really? It would matter for, for being hired for a job, your social media numbers? But they're realizing that those not all of those photographers can manage a set and put a vision together and stay um, and stay under budget and you know and and put it all together, right? So they're at the peak of influencers and stuff as we knew it. Um, yeah, I lost many jobs. I lost many jobs. I lost a really big, big, big record cover, big record cover um, to somebody. That, that job was promised to me. But another photographer came and said, I will do it in the comparable work. I will do it in exchange for Instagram tags. No, no pay. No pay. And in that's exchange. what you mean about undercutting. Undercutting. That what they did, what the commissioner for the record label told me was, Walid, what this person did is not only hurt photographers because she said to me we just sit back and let you guys battle it out we don't do the work you guys destroy each other she was very honest about it because she also promised me the job but she had a very hard time she was like look this is what i'm up against and i was like i get it you know like it's a, it's a business thing i get it i'm not happy but i get it but she also told me that this photographer will not ever be able to get a good job from them because this photo I'm trying so hard to be respectful of this person's anonymity. Uh, anonymity yeah, <laughs> this photographer, man, I like um, sold themselves so cheap that even if they ask for five hundred dollars, we know we had them at an Instagram tag, so they just destroyed themselves so they can get some followers and maybe get some bikini models and things like that, but they're never gonna rise up. And so those are lessons that I take and without outing anybody and the artist and the record label and the commissioner and I teach people on my account to do better, you know? So a new person should not have done it for free? For Well, I mean, that artist, a new person would not get it. Ah, uh, okay. You know, so, first of all, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a th generally a three rule. The, the free shoot should always come from you. Never, if, if I want you to photograph me for free, 
it's going to benefit me the most if it's my idea first. If it's your idea and you're doing a test shoot and you're building your book, that's okay because the initial gain is for you. And then three, maybe four, call it a day. If you can't convince people, and, and, and so don't do a newborn shoot, then a wedding, then an automotive, then a landscape. That's not being smart about it. So if you're going to do, if you're going to start a wedding photography business, then do three or four engagement shoots or weddings. And if you can't sell people on those three or four weddings, then there's another problem. Maybe you have to develop your photo skills, you know, or editing or um, curation and stuff like that. So you lost a job. Big job. Was, Still hurts. Was this when you decided you wanted it? Was this one of the... It was during the, that. Oh. It was during that. So many things. They would say certain things that was just not kind and generalize a certain population and stuff. And, sure. um, and I thought, gosh, I see no problem with that. So they would say, I'm hard to market because blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm like, so then go and market me to that market. Seems like I've got a corner, you know, do your job. And so um, that's why I never did well with, because I knew too much because I had to negotiate my own contracts and everything. And have, even have fake emails initially at the beginning of my career, like a fake manager that I'm like, okay, log into this one now, and I'll log into this one, right? So, but I've negotiated and I've done it and I've budgeted and I've built a, a, a crew and I've done everything. So it was, yeah, so that, what you said, the album cover for, exchi for Instagram exchanges was during that time. It was getting a postcard saying, maybe it's because you're too heavy and you need to lose some weight. And that was after I rejected their idea of I, I photographed too much of a certain population. I was in a coffee shop the other day and I heard a man giving a woman business advice. I guess he was like hired and he said, look, business is not warm and fuzzy. You need to know what you're getting into. This is this not is like, you know, things could get really cutthroat. You know, she was a sweet woman. And he was like counseling her or whatever. And is that the same advice you would make me tell people that even though they're very skilled with the camera and they have a great eye, that they need to know that part? Or is that gonna put people off? I don't think that, I, I, I think that birds of a feather flock together. And initially, if you surround yourself, so yes and no to your answer, first of all. Do your best to surround yourself with good people. Good people will refer you good people. Good people will refer you crew members that are good people. Bad people hang out with bad people. And that's something I've learned. And so um, I'm very, very cautious of who I give my time to and my attention to. But I would tell them to be tough. And if it's cutthroat, if it's cutthroat, understand that it's not personal, but do what you can to make cutthroat like 5% of your business and go in with statements and certain things in your back pocket. So I tell like these new photographers, it's okay to say, let me think about it. Let me get back to you. It's okay because um, really cutthroat people, really dishonest people, they know how to corner a new person and get you to commit and you haven't been jaded yet. So you're going to really keep your word. So I tell them, remove yourself out of the situation. Take a deep breath and, and go with what feels right or like feel it out. Ask people, um, and go there. So it doesn't have to get cutthroat. You just pull out of that room. And if they're very cutthroat, they usually have it out for you. And if I can add one more thing to that, if a person tells you they are honest, get the hell out of the room immediately. If they have to tell you they're honest, they are the least thing from honest because they 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 sense that you see their true character. And so now they're like, oh no, let me sell them that I don't screw people over, that I'm honest. No, I need to see that in your behavior. So that's the biggest thing I tell people, walk away. What if they say they do things on a handshake? They, they, that's they... nice, but no. I'll break a contract before I break a handshake. But it has sometimes the best people, I cut you off and I apologize, but no, okay. the, the best people, um, they're so spread thin that they forget 
they forget what the deal was on a handshake. So they don't, they don't necessarily intend to ruin you. They just forgot and they confuse you with somebody else. So when, even if it's a very simple deal memo, if somebody's like, I go on a handshake, then simplify the contract and just do a simple deal memo. I will do this, 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 this. You will do this, this, this. Cover the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. Cover it, then both sign and it's done. And I, there's so many times I'm like, hey, um, we said this, you're saying this, is this a misunderstanding or should we find a compromise? It just helps because you can't deny what's written, you know, and people are very cool generally.